Hi, hi everyone. Good morning, good evening, good night. I hope you all are fine. Today, uh, I also changed the place of work because uh, in the hotel where I am, there are two weddings, one in each side of the hotel. So I am like hidden in a, in a, in a corner of the hotel. There was a lot of people in Cairo willing to, to get married. They don't know what, what they are waiting for. Even today, um, for most of the cultures, to get married is important. So I've been reading, today is the last day of Virgo, so I've been reading, um, I've been reading that some of you didn't make the list of Virgo, so shall we begin again? Do we do the whole thing again? Uh, a new month? No, no. I know Virgo has been hard, but I want to begin with this concept that Virgo uh, is a constellation of the order, to put order on the things. And uh, we, as the people that are willing to bring the change to the world, that are willing to bring a new level of consciousness to become something different, to transcend this chaotic uh, civilization in order to find the balance and harmony in the future, we are the first ones that must do something with that because for sure you have heard this comparison that if you are willing to change the world outside so first begin with your own world within we are not going to be able to bring awareness to bring harmony and to organize the new world if we don't do our own work within, if we don't do our own uh, hard work of organizing what we have inside. This is why in order to work for the external world, what we have to do is to begin by working with the internal one, because we need coherence in order to do it. So this is the most important thing. One of the main things that I have heard from a lot of people when I am speaking about the new system, which is ontocracy for the future, is that a lot of people um, asking me, yes, we want the ontocracy, we want the ontocracy to happen as soon as possible, um, but Whoever says that is from the need against the actual system. This is one of the things that won't work. The reason why it's so difficult to create the concept of ontocracy for the future is that ontocracy is the concept of a society that first needs to make a big transformation within. If we are not willing to make that inner order inner work with ourselves, um, we are not going to be able to do the same with others. We should understand that in order to make something in, in the future, we should not say, okay, I do this now, so I already did it, I already have it, so I go into another thing. No, the process of Virgo is something that we all have to work constantly, it's not just for just a moment and then you just transcend it. The process of doing this uh, acknowledging of doing this an analysis of myself const is constant, is always. So what we have done now is just a practice to give you tools to let you know in which ways we could make that analysis throughout our life. So this is related with what we have to talk about today, which is 
what we do, um, what what we uh, uh, analyze, what we have done to deliver it to others in the future, that we may call it service. We are going to speak about ontocracy, of course. I will describe ontocracy in uh, in next post and and month months, but uh, it's not something that okay we are going to discuss this in the future. No, what we are doing every day is ontocracy. Okay, so remember that. Uh, the concept of ontocracy comes from the Greek words uh, ontos, that means being, uh, and the word kratos, that means power. So ontokratos, ontocracy, is the power of the self, of the being. So this means that ontocracy is not a future social system, it's a way of life. So this is what we are trying to work with all this work in this month. So um, if you may ask me how many times do I do my preparations, my analysis of myself, I would say that always, every day, because this is not something that you do in a, week in a weekend. This is something that you do constantly. Uh, I do it every day. Every day I analyze something in myself. Every day I'm thinking about from where this, ki this came from or from where I am watching this. Uh, it's constant. It's something that at first is very difficult, but at the end, when you uh, work with that, you start to naturalize this and it's easy. So basically, when you start to make the uh, analysis and do the questions to yourself, uh, is when suddenly you feel how you are more connected with the concept of I am. You start to listen, to hear the answers. So as humans, everything that we are doing here is a service. So let's begin with just understanding that what we are doing through all this year is to make a service to ourselves in order to be strong so then we can be in service to others. So now let's talk about what service means for those who weren't able to read the blog today. First of all, let's try to understand what service means for us today. From our point of view in the, in the culture, uh, service means uh, to precisely to be in service to others, to be useful, uh, to serve the others. All these concepts come with the information and the concept of slavery. Okay, because we usually relate to be in service with the servant, with the person that serves to others, a master, a boss, something. So you serve to others. You give everything from you to others. So that's why in our history we relate service with slavery. To have a master to whom you may start for. So the reason why we relate slavery with service in our mind usually is because the one of the main moments when service and servants were used was in Rome. During the Roman Empire, there was this um, these big families, the important families of the Roman Empire, that lived in big houses that uh, you may know as domus. So in the domus, these big families were the ones that um, 
had um, a lot of people um, doing stuff for them in the house. So they called them the servants, okay? So they were slaves. They were all slaves. And they uh, understood that, that slaves are in the service of the home. So from that moment on in history, every culture that came from the Roman Empire after the fall of the Roman Empire, like for example, globalization came from that. So all the globalized uh, civilization inherit the concept of slavery as service until today that we have services. Today we call service to everything. So basically from the fall of the Roman Empire, we had two different services. The service of um, the service of the society, which is um, um, social services. This means that suddenly the civilization went towards the cities that in Latin you may call Burgo. So the Burgo uh, gives the name to this new kind of kings that were the burgessy, the people that lived in the cities. Uh, all this uh, system of society was about to serve to others and mostly those who lived in the cities. And in the other hand, by religion, the servants were serving to, like slaves, to a god, to a king of heavens. This is the concept of I have to serve to others, I have to serve to the community, I have to serve to the other people. So basically what we used to think when we hear the word service is the one coming from those two currents um, in, our, in our history, which is to be in service of others, to, to subordinate myself before and below the power of others. So that's how usually we project the service, the idea of service. The word to serve was taken by, by the Romans from the Indo-European languages that uh, in the Indo-European languages you may say servo and servo means guardian. So the concept of, that Romans gave to the slaves were those that take care of the house, those that protect the home, the guardians of the domus. Look into this. Look how in history the Romans use the word servus to talk about the people that were taking care of the house. And those people were the slaves. So suddenly in history, what we did was to take the concept of the guardian and we attach it to the person that was taking care, that was the slave. And we put them both together as one and from there, we build a whole civilization. Uh, th this is kind of um, semantics. And it's not a plan be behind that says, that says uh, who changed the name so they can control us. No, no, no. It's just semantics. It's just uh, a way of communication and and suddenly you relate the slave with the guardian and it's just mistakes and semantics of history. That's it. Basically, all the people that came from the concept of unifying the guardian with the slave together, all the ones that come after that were in the trap of themselves. They, they they just fell in their own mistakes of languages. 
there was no one doing a plan to control. It was just something that happened. This is why what we have to try to do is to uh, give the things a new meaning or to resignify the things. So one of the things that I would like to for you to understand is that there was no one saying um, we are going to control this population and make them slaves. No. And why no? Because the vision of slavery <coughs> that we have today is not the same vision of slavery that they had in their time. To be a slave, to have slaves in the past was normal. Even until 60 years ago, for some countries to have slaves was like, oh, it was always like that. Even for slaves, it was normal because it was the only thing that they knew. So we cannot judge, judge the past from the eyes of the present. What we can do is to resignify the past to create a better present. But we cannot say that someone were try, trying to rule ourselves and uh, uh, us in the past because that was the system how it was. It was the only way they knew. Picture that in the past to have a person as a slave was the same thing that for us today is to have a pet, to have a cat or a dog in ham, at home. Someday in the future, they will say, how is possible that those people had dogs and, and cats as slaves at home? Have you thought about that? So to resignify things is not to go and judge the things from the past, it's just to take the things from the past and give them another meaning so I can build a better future or present. Hmm? One of the things that we have to, to ask ourselves according to the service is from where I used to serve in my life because all of us who worked for the consciousness we would say I am here in to serve in service for humanity for for society we usually say that the question would be from where from where are you in in, in your service because it's not the same uh, being in service because you just have to do it because you, ha you have no other option. Or you can say, no, I do it because it is in my power and I decide, I decide to be for the others. So the question would be, <coughs> the things that I do for others in my life, that I did for others in my life, were from a mandate, where because I have no option, or I did it because it was in my power and it was my decision to do it. And I say this because we have to take note of all of that. Because sometimes when we just think about it, we usually don't recognize that many of the things that we do for others as a service, they are not made because it's in my power and decision, they are made because I don't want to be alone, I don't want to be uh, felt like I'm not doing anything, or uh, because uh, you just don't want to go to hell and there is a mandate saying that, that you have to do it or otherwise you will have bad things in your life, whatever. So the task for today would be to take note of all the times that you have served others and to picture if you have done it because it was in your power or because you were thinking what would happen if I don't do it. When we do that, we will recognize that most of, of the services that we did in our life and we do in our life 
they are born from the obligation and not from the freedom of choice. So let's remember that the constellation of Virgo is the one that, rem that reminds us how it is to be in service to others. Virgo is Mother Earth. And this is why Mother Earth gives everything without obligation, without expectation, without waiting for having something back in return. The Mother Virgo is in entire service to its daughters and sons. So basically, Mother Nature, Virgo, what it does is to put order into life, into all the living things, so each one can have what they specifically need without expecting anything in return. I recognize that I am in balance with the energy of Virgo when I recognize that I have order in all the things that I have inside myself. So, because of this order, I know what to give to each one around me without expecting anything in return. That's the unconditional love of Mother Virgo, Mother Earth. That's the service of Mother Earth. So what is Mother Earth doing? It's not at the mercy of, their, of its kids. What it does is to protect them, to take care of them, to nourish them. So this is when we can understand that everything that we have done in each one of these days in the month of Virgo was to put order inside all the things that we have within so we could deliver it on service to the environment that we have around to be in balance, in harmony with everything. So this is why I remind you this was a practice. It doesn't end today. This month was just a practice. So let's go to the information of today. The vibration of today is The statement for today is I am the eternal greed. The code of today is the soul pattern Z. And it says, But who determines the continuity of that power is not the accumulated energy, but the vibration it has to be sustained through time. Z is the sound of the constant buzz. The sound that unites and goes through all that connects all chakras, organs, existences, even the spirit itself, that gives coherence and harmony and destroys everything that is not in it, those that lost its purpose, its path. So let's go to the alignment. As always, we will begin by stretching the body, caressing the body, and Yawn. I let the weight of the body fall down. I begin to focus in my breathing. Take a deep breath 
and perceive how the oxygen gets within your body through the nose, towards the lungs, heart, blood, organs and muscles. Take a deep breath and allow yourself to fall down inside your body. Now, I will return to go through all the path that I have gone, I have done to be who I am. Look within your body, a big cell, and start to perceive it as big as your body in front of you. Become aware that this is a mother cell and that it's and that inside of it you can find all the information of everything that had happened so you could be today being here who you are. Take a deep breath and dive within the cell, absorbing the information, taking it from the chromosomes, caressing with your hands the DNA chain. I recognize that all the path that I have done is here in my hands. Recognize everything that had happened. From the moment you were just an egg, feeling the spermatozoid, becoming two cells by meiosis. Remember when you have become organs and dividing the cells by mitosis. I remember the creation of my entire body within the uterus of my mother. I remember how each one of the steps has made me what I am today. I become aware of all the things that I have organized within me so I could be what I am. I become aware within the cell that everything that I have gone through in these past 10 days has been just the reactivation of a mother cell to resignify my birth to understand the process of my creation and to set a new idea, a new projection of who I want to become. All of that is now anchored in one of my mother cells. So now, within this mother cell in my body, I have the entire information of what I want to become in this new path, in this new life in this new order that I have within. Become aware that all the process of being born 
that I have lived in these days have been to reprogram, to resignify my birth. So my cells can now know that I am willing to be born in a new life, in a new world of consciousness. I recognize that the mother I am coming from is Mother Earth and that my process of being born is the information and the projection of living in the path and life of a new consciousness. So now I recognize and feel how the arms of the light are holding me in front of the body of my mother. I perceive my mother opening her eyes. Opening her arms on service, watching me and receiving me willing to serve in my new life. I perceive how the arms of the light put me in the arms of my mother. Feeling her heartbeat in the chest, her feeding in her breast, the warm skin of her body. Take a deep breath and recognize that in the same way she is in my service, protecting me, taking care of me, I have also come into this new world to be in service to her world. Recognize that her service to me is related to protect me, to nourish me, to take care of me as my service in life is to empower myself to become, to accomplish what I am supposed to be. Take a deep breath and begin to feel how each one of your chakras starts to shine into every direction, creating a big rainbow of light all around from within. Take a deep breath and start to vibrate, activating the torus. expanding the potential of the seed of your inner self. I feel how this torus starts to create a sphere around my body. I perceive how it goes through the crown and goes back to the feet. I made the sound as I feel how the light makes me an individual, cutting the umbilical cord. Shh. <sighs> 
pronounce in the vibration. I perceive through the sound how the torus of myself starts to become a tree in the body of my Mother Earth. I recognize I am the eternal greed. I am the eternal greed. I am the eternal greed. I recognize that all the webs, all the greed is in order and ready to be in service for this new world, for who I am. Take a deep breath and bring your hands to the heart. I say to myself, I am in order. So I set myself on service. For I am the eternal greed. Take a deep breath and begin to bring all this awareness through the body, caressing, stretching, massaging and yawning. And I come back here and now, opening my eyes. Remember that tomorrow we begin with Libra constellation. So take some uh, papers, some pencils, or whatever you feel better to begin making the drawings. So um, that. Drink a lot of water and rest as much as you can. So see you tomorrow at the same time as always. Thank you for this month.